Good morning. Um, I am always a little bit unsure. Um, there we go. I'm always a little bit unsure if I'm doing this correctly, but um, as far as, you know, the technology part, but um, I'm just going to go for it and hope for the best because I, um, I am happy to be with you this morning. So in case we haven't gotten to meet before, my name is Julia Griffith and I'm the director of caring ministries here at Summit Church. Um, I'm in Pastor Jeff's office and um, he's let me use his computer today to lead us in our devotional. <sighs> so good morning and um, let's just pause and have a prayer before we start. Loving God, thank you so much for a time to worship you this morning, to quiet our hearts and our minds so that we can, can think about you and just pause and, and remember our creator and remember that you've got us today, that you've got us in your hands and that you're in control and um, just, just to spend time with you. So thank you for that gift and please bless us and protect us and um, lead us to show others your love and your kindness today. In Jesus name. Amen. Okay. So tickled to be with you and we're going to do the meditation moments. Um, um, I thought we would do uh, the one that's for Thursday actually. Um, and so today is Thursday, February 10. It's my husband's birthday. So happy birthday to Wade. And, um, uh, and we are first called to read Romans and Revelations. Um, uh, so let me get that. I'm so very sorry. I left my um, Bible in my office. So let me get us to Romans. And you can be finding Romans in your Bible too. We're going to Romans 6. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts and the letters to the Romans. Okay, and so Romans 6, 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Um, that's from Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. And then we're going to read from Revelation chapter 18. And that's chapter 18, verses 7 through 8. Revelation 18, 7 through 8. She glorified herself and lived in luxury, so match it now with torment and sorrow. She boasted in her heart, I am queen on my throne. I am no helpless widow, and I have no reason to mourn. Therefore, these plagues will overtake her in a single day, death and mourning and famine. She will be completely consumed by fire, for the Lord God who judges her is mighty. So the aspect of hell that makes it hardest for some people to believe in God is the idea that a loving God would supernaturally keep humans alive for all eternity just to torture them. That idea owes more to Greek philosophy than to biblical teaching when we take it as a whole. Um, to the Romans, the Apostle Paul was quite clear. Humans do not have eternal life on our own. It is a gift from God, and the result of refusing that gift is death rather than eternal torture. It is a gift from God, and the result of refusing that gift 
is death rather than eternal torture. Okay. So that's the way Paul um, uh, communicated with others. So Paul, the Apostle Paul's great life mission and his focus in Romans was to preach God's saving love and grace. As scholar William Barclay wrote, the Christian gospel does not in the first place offer men an intellectual creed or a moral code. It offers them life, the very life of God. In what ways have you experienced? Here's a question for us all just to ponder today. In what ways have you experienced God's gift of a hope filled quality of life as you have chosen to follow Jesus? So I'll, I'll read that again. In what ways have you experienced God's gift of a hope filled quality of life as you have chosen to follow Jesus? Um, I will just give my own personal example, just one personal example, but um, something that Pastor Jeff often says that um, I hadn't heard till I started worshiping here that I think is a really beautiful kind of thing to chew on and to remember is that with with our belief in God, the worst thing is never the last thing. And I firmly believe that. And so um, that he'll make all things new and he'll make all things right. And um, so that's just one example for me about the hope. So um, and in um, Revelation, chapter 18, which I just read, the wicked Roman Empire's judgment came in a single day and she was consumed. But one way to view Revelation is that it is not aimed at telling us when the end will happen. It is aimed at telling us that in the end, none of these human gods will be left standing and that Christians are called to give our hearts and our allegiance only to one God who is worthy of our praise one God, an audience of one worthy of our praise. And, and how do revelate? This is another question for us to chew on today. How do revelations images suggest that the result of God's judge judgment, but not necessarily the process is eternal. So again, I'll read that for us to think about how do revelations images suggest that the result of God's judgment, but not necessarily the process is eternal. Okay, so that's interesting for us to, to chew on today. Um, I don't I don't have a lot of answers to that part. Um, I haven't done a lot of studying with Revelation, um, and I haven't been to seminary. Um, but I I try to each day, just listen to the nudges that God gives me. Um, sometimes I fall short of that, of course. Um, but that's one way that I try to just kind of live each day. And I, I've heard it said that, you know, God wants to bring heaven here to earth for us. And so that while we're here, we can try to make the, the most of this world instead of always focusing on what's to come, which is out of our hands, of course, but instead trying to bring heaven here, which in my personal opinion might look like giving to others because that's when we feel sometimes the very best. Um, and it might mean helping others. It might mean um, spending time alone with God and prayer and, and listening for his voice, all those things. It might mean those moments when God brings peace to us, the peace that only God can bring. Um, I feel like that's a gift where heaven's sort of touching earth for a moment for us. Um, and I'm going to pray um, and I'm going to close this in prayer, but just one way to pray that I um, have been thinking about lately, in case you've never heard of this before, is with the acronym PRAY, P-R-A-Y. With the P, we praise. We thank God for all the good he's doing in our lives. We say thank you and we we rejoice in the good and we, we, we um, yeah, we praise. The R can stand for repent. So that's a time where we turn to God and we say, here's the ways I've screwed up in the last few days. Here's the things I haven't done that I should have done. Here's the things I did I wish I hadn't done. So we repent with the R. The A can stand for ask. That's the time in our prayer where we can say, here are the things I need to talk to you about, God, and I need to ask you for, or I need to ask about, help me understand. And then why, to me, the hardest sometimes is the yield. So um, with the why, we can yield to God. We can pause and listen for his answers. And um, again, to me, that's some of the hardest, being patient and 
trying to wait for those answers. So again, if that's helpful to you today in some way, it's pray, praise, repent, ask, and yield. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'm going to close this with prayer. And um, I just hope that, you know, you have a wonderful day. Sorry, that's what I want to say. Okay. Lord Jesus, remind me that your great heart of love reaches out yearningly, persistently for me and all my human brothers and sisters. Keep me focused on your gift of eternal life. Amen. Go in peace and serve God. Thank you. See you soon. Bye.